may recognize our next guest from Paramount Network's wildly popular show, Bar Rescue. He's the one and only John Taffer. Let's get raw. Let's get raw, man. <laughs> Let's have the raw word. Let's do it. <laughs> now, John, you're about to tape the 160th episode. So with all those episodes, tell me a story of something that stands out to you. You know, there was an episode that I did with a couple from the Dominican Republic. And when I do Bar Rescue, I've never been there before, never met these people, no actors. So I sit in my SUV in front, and the wife gets in the SUV with me. And she has a gift bag. So I say, oh. What's the gift for? She goes, it's my anniversary with my husband. I said, oh, she goes, 14 years. I said, terrific, what'd you get him? She says, divorce papers. <gasps> oh. Now, this was a complete shock to me. So her husband was cheating on her, wasn't coming home at night. We watch on the monitor together in my SUV, and a girl walks up to the husband and says, are you married? He says, there's no ring on this finger. As his wife is watching it with me on camera, she gets up, if you've seen this episode, she runs into the bar, belts her husband in the mouth, throws a drink in his face, rips his shirt off, and that's how it started. <laughs> All right. Seems about The right. episode ended four days later, and I'm very proud of this, of them tearing up the divorce papers, giving me hugs and kisses, and then three months later, I got an email that they had their fourth child, and now they're very successful. Oh, wow. that's nice. Wow, look at you, mending relationships. It is, and that's the shock of my show, and I think that's why we're still so successful, is it shocks me every week, so it probably shocks you every week, yeah. too. So it's not pre-planned. You no. go in, it's really genuine, and that gives people a sense in the audience that this is real, and therefore you think they're riveted because of that. I think you can't fool people. I think people are smart, and I'm not gonna fake you out. It is real, so there's no scripts, no actors. I've never been there before. I don't even look at casting reels. Mm -hmm. I allow all that to happen from production. I get about a 30-second briefing. They're in debt this much, they're married, they're ready to kill each other, mm -hmm. they have so much money, et cetera, and then I just go in and do my thing. So in your personal life, you're a lot different than your take-no-nonsense persona on the show, so where does that come from? You know, when I do a bar rescue, Mm -hmm. Normally, it would take me 60 days or so to do it. I got to think it, design it, put it together, demographics, planning, training. With Bar Rescue, I have four days. And 36 hours of those four days are remodel. So I really have about 20 hours with them. So there's this clock ticking in my head every minute. And I'm under constant pressure. I don't have time for you to get on board. I got to get you on board now. So it winds up being very confrontational because if I don't get them where I need them to be each day, at right. the end, I'm finished. We're not going to make it. And you feel like a personal failure if you don't do that, right? And they're counting on me. Mm -hmm. You know, they look at the camera themselves and they say, well, we're out of money. We got three weeks to go. I'm living in my parents' basement. I'm in debt right. 400 grand. It's real. Well, you've said, you know, Bar Rescue is different, of course. And you've said that you don't want to have it as regular TV, that there's a philosophical principle that organizes what you do. Tell us what that is. Yeah, you know, when I've done 160 Bar Rescues. And what's fascinating to me is in life, we always are taught about success. Do this for success, the blocks of success, the steps of success. After 160 bar rescues, I've learned more about failure than anyone. I mean, these people can't even afford to buy me lunch. So after 160 times, I found a common denominator of failure. Mm -hmm. And it's so darn simple, it's an excuse. You see, if you make an excuse, uh -huh. it's not your fault. You can blame someone or something else, there's right. no reason to change. But if you wake up in the morning and blame yourself, then you will change. Mm -hmm. right. So I have to cause them to blame themselves, and that gets sort of ugly. Yeah. How, how successful do you feel like you've been with the bars long term? There's an independent website called Bar Rescue Updates, mm -hmm. and I have nothing to do with it. They do it on their own. They have us tracking at a little over 70% success factor, wow. and I'm really proud of wow, that. That's, amazing. that's pretty phenomenal. Considering man. where they're starting, yeah. No doubt. Now let's shift here to this book, Don't BS Yourself. Crush the excuses that are holding you back. You've already kind of indicated that, but tell us what motivated you to do a book. I've written a few of these myself. I know myself. You have. So this is, uh, this is pr pretty remarkable, and you're pretty proud of that, all right? I am. It was a lot of work. This was yeah. a labor of, of love. About two years ago, I went through Youngstown, Ohio, to shoot a bar rescue. And I'm in Main Street, and every store was empty. Mm -hmm. 22,000 homes were empty. And I realized that every one of those empty stores is a family business that failed somebody's life dream that went up in smoke. And it became a passion for me. I want to stop this trend. I want to see those stores light up. I want to see families get back into small business again. And just 10 years ago, 62% of small businesses were owned by families. Now it's 40%. Mm -hmm. So 
taking this principle of helping people, I realized that if the common denominator of failure is an excuse, I wanted to define an excuse. So an excuse is, in essence, you rationalizing a mistake. If you didn't make a mistake, you wouldn't need the excuse, would you? Mm -hmm. So if we stop with the excuses, we have to act. So what I did in the book is I took the six biggest excuses I've ever dealt with and destroyed them. Mm. So now when you finish with the book, those excuses don't work anymore. What are you going to do now? Now you got to act. And hopefully we move people forward. That's beautiful. So, John, before you go, for the people watching who may be struggling with overcoming failure, what would you say to them? Like, take a look into the camera and give them that message. What would you say to them at home? Whatever obstacle you're experiencing, whether it's fear, which is an excuse, circumstance, which is an excuse, ego, which is an excuse, right, sparsity, not having enough money. Remember, Stephen Jobs started in his garage. Henry Ford started with nothing. You can do this. If you let the excuses get in front of you, the excuses will be why you failed, not you. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. Tune in to the new season of Bar Rescue every Sunday night at 10, 9 central on Paramount Network. And don't forget to get your copy of Don't Bull Bleep Yourself. (laughs) Crush the excuses that are holding you back in stores now. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you.